Castro culture Galician, cultura castrexa, Portuguese, cultura castreja, Asturian, cultura castriega, Spanish, cultura castrina is the archaeological term for the material culture of the northwestern regions of the Iberian Peninsula present-day northern Portugal together with Galicia, Asturias, Castile and Leon, Cantabria and Basque country from the end of the Bronze Age c. 9th century BC until it was subsumed by Roman culture c. 1st century BC. It is the culture associated with the Celtiberians, closely associated to the western Hallstatt horizon of Central Europe. The most notable characteristics of this culture are, its walled arpida and hill forts, known locally as castros, from Latin castrum castle and the scarcity of visible burial practices, in spite of the frequent depositions of prestige items and goods, swords and other metallic riches in rocky outcrops, rivers and other aquatic contexts since the Atlantic Bronze Age. This cultural area extended east to the Cares River and south into the lower Douro River Valley. The area of Avenue Valley was the core region of this culture, with a large number of small Castro settlements, but also including larger arpida, the Cividades from Latin Civitas, city, some known as Citanias by archaeologists, due to their city-like structure, Civitade de Bagunte, Civitas Bogonti, Civitade de Terraso, Civitas Terraso, Citania de Briteros, and Citania de Sanfins. topic history The Castro culture emerged during the first 2 centuries of the 1st millennium BCE in the region extending from the Douro River up to the Minho but soon expanding north along the coast and east following the river valleys reaching the mountain ranges which separate the Atlantic coast of the Iberian Peninsula from the central plateau or meseta it was the result of the autonomous evolution of Atlantic Bronze Age communities, after the local collapse of the long-range Atlantic network of interchange of prestige items. The end of the Atlantic Bronze Age From the Mondego River up to the Minho River, along the coastal areas of northern Portugal, during the last two centuries of the second millennium BCE a series of settlements were established in high, well-communicated places, radiating from a core area north of the Mondego, and usually specializing themselves in the production of Atlantic Bronze Age metallurgy, cauldrons, knives, bronze vases, roasting spits, flesh hooks, swords, axes and jewellery relating to a noble elite who celebrated ritual banquets and who participated in an extensive network of interchange of prestige items, from the Mediterranean and up to the British Isles. These villages were closely related to the open settlements which characterized the First Bronze Age, frequently established near the valleys and the richer agricultural lands. From the beginning of the first millennium, the network appears to collapse, possibly because the Iron Age had outdated the Atlantic tin and bronze products in the Mediterranean region, and the large-scale production of metallic items was reduced to the elaboration of axes and tools, which are still found buried in very large quantities all along the European Atlantic coast. Formative period During the transition of the Bronze to the Iron Age, from the Douro in modern northern Portugal and up along the coasts of Galicia until the central regions of Asturias, the settlement in artificially fortified places substituted the old open settlement model. These early hill forts were small, one hectare at most, being situated in hills, peninsulas or another naturally defended places, usually endowed with long-range visibility. The artificial defences were initially composed of earthen walls, battlements and ditches, which enclosed an inner habitable space. 
This space was mostly left void, non-urbanized, and used for communal activities, comprising a few circular, oblong, or rounded squared huts, of 5 to 15 meters 16 to 49 feet in the largest dimension, built with wood, vegetable materials and mud, sometimes reinforced with stony low walls. The major inner feature of these multifunctional undivided cabins were the hearth, circular or quadrangular, and which conditioned the uses of the other spaces of the room. In essence, the main characteristic of this formative period is the assumption by the community of a larger authority at the expense of the elites, reflected in the minor importance of prestige items production, while the collective invested important resources and labor in the communal spaces and defenses. Topic: <laughs> Second Iron Age. Since the beginning of the 6th century BCE the Castro culture experienced an inner expansion, hundreds of new hill forts were founded, while some older small ones were abandoned for new emplacements. These new settlements were founded near valleys, in the vicinity of the richest farmlands, and these are generally protected by several defense lines, composed of ramparts, ditches, and sound stony walls, probably built not only as a defensive apparatus but also as a feature which could confer prestige to the community. Sometimes, human remains have been found in cysts or under the walls, implying some kind of foundational protective ritual. Not only did the number of settlements grow during this period, but also their size and density. First, the old familiar huts were frequently substituted by groups of family housing, composed generally of one or more huts with hearth, plus round granaries, and elongated or square sheds and workshops. At the same time, these houses and groups tended to occupy most of the internal room of the hill forts, reducing the communitarian open spaces, which in turn would have been substituted by other facilities such as saunas, communitarian halls, and shared forges. Although most of the communities of this period had mostly self-sufficient isolated economies, one important change was the return of trade with the Mediterranean by the now independent Carthage, a thriving Western Mediterranean power. Carthaginian merchants brought imports of wine, glass, pottery and other goods through a series of emporia, commercial post which sometimes included temples and other installations. At the same time, the archaeological register shows, through the finding of large quantities of fibulae, pins, pincers for hair extraction, pendants, earrings, torques, bracelets, and other personal objects, the ongoing importance of the individual and his or her physical appearance. While the archaeological record of the Castro Iron Age show suggests a very egalitarian society, these findings imply the development of a privileged class with better access to prestige items. Topic: <laughs> The Arpida. From the 2nd century BC, especially in the south, some of the hill forts turned into semi-urban fortified towns, Arpida, their remains are locally known as Cividades or Cidades, cities, with populations of some few thousand inhabitants, such as Cividade de Bagunte 50 hectares, Briteros 24 hectares, San Fins 15 hectares, San Cibrao de Laws 20 hectares, or Santa Tegra 15 hectares, some of them were even larger than the cities, Bracara Augusti and Lucas Augusti, that Rome established a century later. These native cities or citadels were characterized by their size and by urban features such as paved streets equipped with channels for stormwater runoff, reservoirs of potable water, and evidence of urban planning. Many of them also presented an inner and upper walled space, relatively large and scarcely urbanized, called acropole by local scholars. These arpida were generally surrounded by concentric ditches and stone walls, up to five in Briteros, sometimes reinforced with towers. 
Gates to these arpida become monumental and frequently have sculptures of warriors. The oppidas' dwelling areas are frequently externally walled, and kitchens, sheds, granaries, workshops and living rooms are ordered around an inner paved yard, sometimes equipped with fountains, drains and reservoirs. Cividade de Bagunte was one of the largest cities with 50 hectares. The cities are surrounded by a number of smaller castros, some of which may have been defensive outposts of cities, such as Castro de Londos, that was probably an outpost of Cividade de Terraso. There is a Cividade toponym in Braga, a citadel established by Augustus, although there are no archaeological findings apart from an ancient parish name and pre-Roman baths. Bracara Augusta later became the capital of the Roman province of Galicia, which encompassed all the lands once part of the Castro culture. <laughs> Roman era The first meeting of Rome with the inhabitants of the Castros and Cividades was during the Punic Wars, when Carthaginians hired local mercenaries for fighting Rome in the Mediterranean and into Italy. Later on, Galeretians backed Lusitanians fighting Romans, and as a result the Roman general Decimus Junius Brutus Calacus led a successful punishment expedition into the north in 137 BCE. The victory he celebrated in Rome granted him the title Calacus. Galician. During the next century, Galicia was still theatre of operation for Perpenna, 73 BCE, Julius Caesar, 61 BCE, and the generals of Augustus, 29 to 19 BCE. But only after the Romans defeated the Asturians and Cantabrians in 19 BCE is evident through inscriptions, numismatic, and other archaeological findings the submission of the local powers to Rome. While the 1st century BCE represents an era of expansion and maturity for the Castro culture, under Roman influence and with the local economy apparently powered more than hindered by Roman commerce and wars, during the next century the control of Roma became political and military, and for the first time in more than a millennium new unfortified settlements were established in the plains and valleys, at the same time that numerous hill forts and cities were abandoned. Strabo wrote, probably describing this process, "...until they were stopped by the Romans, who humiliated them and reduced most of their cities to mere villages." Strabo, 3.3.5 The culture went through somewhat of a transformation, as a result of the Roman conquest and formation of the Roman province of Galicia in the heart of the Castro cultural area. By the 2nd century CE most hill forts and arpida had been abandoned or reused as sanctuaries or worshipping places, but some others kept being occupied up to the 5th century, when the Germanic Suvi established themselves in Galicia. <laughs> <laughs> economy and arts As stated, while Bronze Age economy was based on the exploitation and exportation of mineral local resources, tin and copper and on mass production and long-range distribution of prestige items, Iron Age economy was based on an economy of necessity goods, as most items and productions were obtained in situ, or interchanged thought short-range commerce. Anyway, in the southern coastal areas the presence of Mediterranean merchants from the 6th century BC onward, would have occasioned an increase in social inequality, bringing a large number of importations fine pottery, fibulae, wine, glass and other products and technological innovations, such as round granite millstones, which would have merged with the Atlantic local traditions. Ancient Roman military presence in the south and east of the Iberian Peninsula since the 2nd century BC would have reinforced the role of the autochthonous warrior elites, with better access to local prestige items and importations. <laughs> <laughs> Food and food production 
Pollen analyses confirms the Iron Age as a period of intense deforestation in Galicia and northern Portugal, with meadows and fields expanding at the expense of woodland. Using three main type of tools, plows, sickles and hoes, together with axes for woodcutting, the Castro inhabitants grew a number of cereals, wheat, millet, possibly also rye for baking bread, as well as oats and barley which they also used for beer production. They also grew beans, peas and cabbage, and flax for fabric and clothes production. Other vegetables were collected, nettle, watercress. Large quantities of acorns have been found hoarded in most hill forts, as they were used for bread production once toasted and crushed in granite stone mills. The second pillar of local economy was animal husbandry. Galaretians bred cattle for meat, milk, and butter production. They also used oxen for dragging carts and plows, while horses were used mainly for human transportation. They also bred sheep and goats, for meat and wool, and pigs for meat. Wild animals like deer or boars were frequently chased. In coastal areas, fishing and collecting shellfish were important activities. Strabo wrote that the people of northern Iberia used boats made of leather, probably similar to Irish curricks and Welsh coracles, for local navigation. Archaeologists have found hooks and weights for nets, as well as open seas fish remains, confirming inhabitants of the coastal areas as fishermen. Metallurgy Mining was an integral part of the culture, and it attracted Mediterranean merchants, first Phoenicians, later Carthaginians and Romans. Gold, iron, copper, tin and lead were the most common ores mined. Castro metallurgy refined the metals from ores and cast them to make various tools. During the initial centuries of the first millennium BC bronze was still the most used metal, although iron was progressively introduced. Main products include tools sickles, hoes, plows, axes, domestic items knives and cauldrons, and weapons antenna swords, spearheads. During the initial Iron Age the local artisans stopped producing some of the most characteristic Bronze Age items such as carp tongue, leaf-shaped and rapier swords, double-ringed axes, breastplates and most jewellery. From this time, the Castro culture develops jewellery of the Hallstatt type, but with a distinctive Mediterranean influence, especially in the production of feminine jewellery. Some 120 gold torques are known, produced in three main regional styles frequently having large, void terminals, containing little stones which allowed them to be also used as rattles. Other metal artifacts include antenna hilted swords and knives, Montefortino helmets with local decoration and sacrificial or votive axes with depictions of complex sacrificial scenes similar to classical Suovitaurelia, with torques, cauldrons, weapons, animals of diverse species and string-like motifs. Decorative motifs include rosettes, triskelions, swastikas, spirals, interlaces, as well as palm tree, herring bone and string motives, many of which were still carved in Romanesque churches, and are still used today in local folk art and traditional items in Galicia, Portugal and northern Spain. These same motifs were also extensively used in stone decoration. Castro sculpture also reveal that locals carved these figures in wood items, such as chairs, and weaved them into their clothes. Topic: Stonework. While the use of stone for constructions is an old tradition in the Castro culture, dating from the first centuries of the first millennium BC, sculpture only became usual from the second century BC, especially in the southern half of the territory associated to the Arpida. Five main types are produced, all of them in granite stone. 
guerreros or warrior statues, usually representing a male warrior in a standing pose, holding ready a short sword and a kyetra small local shield, and wearing a cap or helmet, torque, virii bracelets, and decorated shirt, skirt and belt. Sitting statues, they usually depicts what is considered to be a god sitting on a decorated throne, wearing virii or bracelets, and holding a cup or pot. Although the motives are autochthonous, their model are clearly Mediterranean. Nevertheless, unlike the Galaretian ones, the Iberian sitting statues usually depicts goddesses. Some few statues of feminine divinities are also known representing a standing nude woman only wearing a torque, as the male warrior statues. Severed heads, similar to the tetes coupe from France, they represent dead heads, and were usually located in walls of ancient hill forts, and are still found reused near of them. Unlike all the other types, these are more common in the north. Pedras formosas literally beauty stones, or elaborated and sculpted slabs used inside saunas, as door frame of the inner room. Architectural decoration – The houses of the Arpida of southern Galicia and northern Portugal frequently contains architectural elements engraved with geometric auspicious motives, rosettes, triskelions, wheels, spirals, swastikas, string-like and interlaced designs, among others. Pottery and other crafts Pottery was produced locally in a variety of styles, although wealthier people also possessed imported Mediterranean products. The richest pottery was produced in the south, from the Rias Baixas region in Galicia to the Douro, where decoration was frequently stamped and incised into pots and vases. The patterns used often revealed the town where these were produced. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Language, Society and Religion. Topic: <inaudible> 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 Society and Government. In the 1st century AD, more than 700,000 people were living in the main area of the Castro culture, in hill forts and Arpida. Northern Galarechi were divided into 16 populi or tribes, Lamavi, Albionese, Sibachi, Agivari Namarini, Adovi, Aroni, Aritrabe, Celticai Neri, Celticai Supertamachi, Kopori, Celticai Prestamachi, Chileni, Suri, Beidui. Astures were divided in Augustani and Transmontani, comprising 22 populi, Giguri, Tiburi, Suzari, Paisici, Lanciences, Zoeli, among others. Southern Galaretians comprising the area of the Arpida, were composed of 24 civitates, Heleni, Grovi, Luni, Serbi, Bracari, Interamnici, Limici, Quirquerni, Silerni, Tamagani, Bibali, Calareci, Aquase, Caladuni. Each populi or civitas was composed of a number of castea, each one comprehending one or more hill forts or arpida, by themselves an autonomous political chiefdom, probably under the direction of a chief and a senate. Under Roman influence the tribes or populi apparently ascended to a major role, at the expense of the minor entities. From the beginning of our era a few Latin inscriptions are known where some individuals declare themselves princeps or ambamogadus of a certain populi or civitas. Topic onomastics and languages The name of some of the castles and arpida are known through the declaration of origin of persons mentioned in epitaphs and votive Latin inscriptions Berisamo, Letiobri, Ercoriobri, Lucioclo, Olca, Serante, Talabriga, Avilios, Medunio, Durbede. 
through the epithets of local gods in votive altars Alaniobrica, Verubrico, Aetiobrigo, Viriocelense, and the testimony of classic authors and geographers Adrabrica, Ebora, Ababrica, Nematobriga, Brigantium, Alina, Caledunum, Tide, Glandomirum, Oshilum. Some more names can be inferred from modern place names, as those containing an evolution of the Celtic element Briggs meaning hill and characteristically ligated to old hill forts Tragave, Ogrove, approximately half the pre-Latin toponyms of Roman Gallicia were Celtic, while the rest were either non-Celtic Western Indo-European, or mixed toponyms containing Celtic and non-Celtic elements. On the local personal names, less than 200 are known, many of which are also present either in the Lusitania, or either among the Astures, or among the Celtiberians. Whilst many of them have a sure Celtic etymology, frequently related to war, fame or valour, others show preservation of p, and so are probably Lusitanian better than properly Celtic. In any case, many names could be Celtic or Lusitanian, or even belong to another Indo-European local language. Among the most frequent names are Reburus, Camillus related to Old Irish Cam battle, encounter, Caturus to Celtic asterisk Cartu fight, Cloxius to Celtic asterisk Cloito renown, with the derivatives Clutimus very famous and Clautius, and the composite Vesuclotus he who have good fame, Medimus, Bucius, Lovesius, Pintimus, Ladronus, Apollus, Andamus may be to Celtic and Amo the undermost, Blona, Abura, Ebura, Albura, Arius, Celius, and Calicus to Celtic asterisk Calo Omen, Celtiatus, Talavius, Viriatus, among others. A certain number of personal names are also exclusive to Gallicia, among these Artius to Celtic asterisk Arctos bear, Nantia and Nantius to Celtic asterisk Nant fight, Cambavius to Celtic asterisk Cambo bent, Vesius probably Celtic, from Pi asterisk wake fight, Kilernius to Celtic asterisk Kelfern cauldron, Mebdius, Corilius to Pi asterisk Coro army, Melgicus to Pi asterisk HMELG Milk, Lovius, Derbagia, Largius, Lausius, Adius to Celtic asterisk I do fire, Balcaius, and the composites Verotius, Vesuclotus, Cadroiolo, Verobleus, among other composite and derivative names. Very characteristic of the peoples of the Castro culture Galaretians and Westernist chores is their onomastic formula. Whilst the onomastic formula among the Celtiberians usually is composed by a first name followed by a patronymic expressed as a genitive, and sometimes a reference to the gens, the Castro people complete name was composed as this, first name plus patronymic genitive plus optional reference to the populi or nation nominative plus castello or its short form greater than plus origin of the person equals name of the Castro ablative so, a name Name such as Caelo Cadroiolonis Fcilenvs greater than Berisamo would stand for Caelio's son of Cadriolo, a Chilenian, from the hill fort named Berisamos. Other similar anthroponymical patterns are known referring mostly to persons born in the regions in between the rivers Navia in Asturias and Douro in Portugal, the ancient Galicia, among them, Nysa Clvtosi greater than Cariaca Princiapisalbionum, Nysa son of Clutosius, from the hill fort known as Cariaca, Prince of the Albions. A P A N A A M B O L L I F C E L T I C A S U P E R T A M Arica, greater than, O B R I, Apana daughter of Ambolus, a super Tamaric Celtic, from the hill fort known as Obri. A N C E I T V S V A C C I F L I M I C V S greater than T A L A B R I C A Ancetos son of Vaxios, a Limic, from the hill fort known as Talabriga. B A S S V S M E D A M I F G R O V V S greater than Verio, Basso's son of Medamos, a Grovian, from the hill fort known as Verio.
Ladronu S Dovi Bra C A Rus Casteth O D U R B E D E Ladronos son of Dovios a Bracaran from the castle Derbede. Topic Religion. The religious pantheon was extensive and included local and pan-Celtic gods. Among the later ones the most relevant was Lugus. Five inscriptions are known with dedication to this deity, whose name is frequently expressed as a plural dative L-U-G-U-B-O, L-U-C-O-U-B-U. The votive altars containing this dedications frequently present three holes for gifts or sacrifices. Other pan-European deities include Bormanicus, a god related to hot springs, the Matries, and Sulis or Suleviae More numerous are the votive inscriptions dedicated to the autochthonous Kosis, Bandua, Nabia, and Roya. Hundreds of Latin inscriptions have survived with dedications to gods and goddesses. Archaeological finds such as ceremonial axes decorated with animal sacrificial scenes, together with the severed head sculptures and the testimonies of classical authors, confirms the ceremonial sacrifice of animals, and probably including human sacrifice as well, as among Lusitanians and Gauls. The largest number of indigenous deities found in the whole Iberian Peninsula are located in the Lusitanian Galician regions, and models proposing a fragmented and disorganized pantheon have been discarded, since the number of deities occurring together is similar to other Celtic peoples in Europe and ancient civilizations. Kosis, a male deity, was worshipped in the coastal areas where the Celticae dwelt, from the region around Aveiro and Porto to northern Galicia, but seldom inland, with the exception of the El Bietso region in Leon, where this cult has been attributed to the known arrival of Galician miners, most notably from among the Celticae Supertamarici. This deity has not been recorded in the same areas as Bandua, Roya and Nabia deities occur, and El Bietso follows the same pattern as in the coast. From a theonymical point of view, this suggests some ethno-cultural differences between the coast and inland areas. With the exception of the Grovii people, Pomponius Mela stated that all the Populi were Celtic and Kosis was not worshipped there. Pliny also rejected that the Grovii were Celtic, he considered them to have a Greek origin. Bandua is closely associated with Roman Mars and less frequently worshipped by women. The religious nature of Kosis had many similarities with that of Bandua. Bandua had a warlike character and a defender of local communities. The worship of these two gods do not overlap but rather complement each other, occupying practically the whole of the western territory of the Iberian Peninsula. Supporting the idea, no evidence has been found of any women worshipping at any of the monuments dedicated to Kosis. Kosis sites are found near settlements, such as in San Fins and the settlement near A Karuna. Nabia had double invocation, one male and one female. The supreme Nabia is related to Jupiter and another incarnation of the deity, identified with Diana, Juno or Victoria or others from the Roman pantheon, linked to the protection and defense of the community or health, wealth and fertility. Bandua, Roya, Arentius Arentia, Quangius, Munidus, Tribaruna, Laniana, and Nabia worshipped in the heart of Lusitania vanishes almost completely outside the boundary with the Vetans. Bandua, Roya and Nabia were worshipped in the core area of Lusitania including northern Extremadura to Baira Baisha and northern Lusitania and reaching inland Galicia. The diffusion of these gods throughout the whole of the northern interior area shows a cultural continuity with central Lusitania. Funerary rites are mostly unknown except at few places, such as Cividade de Terraso, where cremation was practiced. Topic: Major sites. 
World Heritage Candidates in 2010. Citania de Briteros, Guimaraus, Northern Portugal Citania de Sanfins, Pacos de Ferreira, Northern Portugal Citania de Santa Luzia, Viana de Castelo, Northern Portugal Citania do Monte Mozinho, Penafiel, Northern Portugal Cividade de Terraso, Pavoa de Vazam, Northern Portugal Cividade de Bagunte, Vila de Conde, Northern Portugal Cividade de Ancora, Caminha and Viana de Castelo, Northern Portugal Santa Trega, Aguada, Galicia San Cibron de Laws, Aurens, Galicia Castro de São Lourenço, Esporzende, Northern Portugal Castro de Alvarejos, Trofa, Northern Portugal Castro de Carmona, Barcelos, Northern Portugal Castro de Iras, Vila Nova de Famalicão, Northern Portugal Castro de São Juliao, Vila Verde, Northern Portugal Castro Mau, Aurens, Galicia Outero Lezenho, Boticas, Northern Portugal Outero Carvalhos, Boticas, Northern Portugal Outero do Populo, Alijo, Northern Portugal Outero de Ramaras, Santa Maria da Feira, Northern Portugal Outero de Bios, São Pedro do Sul, Northern Portugal Outero de Cacoda, São Pedro do Sul, Northern Portugal Bornero, Coruna, Galicia Cabaco do Vuga, Orgueda, Northern Portugal Viladonga, Lugo, Galicia Castro of Vila Nova de São Pedro Castro of Zambujalvri de Castros do Noroeste, the Northwestern Castro Network, was established in 2015 grouping the most important sites in northern Portugal as founding members out of 2,000 archaeological sites, Boticas Castro do Lezenho, Esporzende São Lourenço, Monsau São Caetano, Pacos de Ferreira Sanfins, Penafiel Monte Mozinho, Pavoa de Vazam Cividade de Terraso, Santo Terso, Castro do Padrão, Trofa, Alvarejos, and Vila de Cond Bagunte, the Sociedade Martins Sarmento, from Guimaraus, which manages Citania de Briteros, and the Direção Regional de Cultura, managing Citania de Santa Luzia in Viana de Castelo. Despite its name, the network includes, for the time being, only Portuguese partners, and froze the idea to World Heritage Candidacy to UNESCO, given the disparities in archaeological research, and the necessity to create visitation and promotion conditions. This is especially true in the municipality of Vila do Conde, which holds Cividade de Bagunte, one of the largest sites, along with seven other castros. The Vila de Con City Hall managed to obtain its Cividades land area only in 2015, after 60 years of negotiations and legal confrontation. Other castros in Asturias Spain. The Carriaca Castro is not identified, as only a small amount of castros are called with his old names like Coana. Important castros in the Albion territory, near the Nicestele and Navia and O rivers are, Coana, Chao de Samartin, Pendia and Taramundi. See also List of castros in Galicia List of castros in Asturias List of Castros in Castile and Leon Celtic place names in Galicia Celts Galarechi Galician Institute for Celtic Studies Galaretian language Celtiberian language Lusitanian language Topic Notes Topic Bibliography 
Arias Vila, F. 1992. A Romanization de Galicia. Anossa Terra, 1992. ISBN 84-604-3279-3. Armada, Exosé Lois, García Vuelta, Oscar. Os Atributos do Guerrero, as Ofrendas da Comunidade. A Interpretation dos Talks a Traves da Iconogria. Caedra. Revista Umesa de Estudios. Retrieved 16 July 2015. Aeon Vila, Exerxo A Round Iron Age, The Circular House in the Hill Forts of the Northwestern Iberian Peninsula. In E. Keltoy, Vol. 6-903-1003. UW System Board of Regents, 2008. ISSN 1540-4889. Calo Lurido, F. 1993. A Cultura Castrexa. A Nossa Terra, 1993. ISBN 84-89138-71-0. Garcia Quintela, 2005. Celtic Elements in Northwestern Spain in Pre-Roman Times. In E. Keltoy, Vol. 6-497-569. UW System Board of Regents, 2005. ISSN 1540-4889. Gonzalez Garcia, F. J. Ed. 2007. Los Pueblos de la Galicia Saltica. ACAL, 2007. ISBN 978-84-460-2260-2. Gonzalez Ruibal, Alfredo 2004. Artistic Expression and Material Culture in Celtic Galicia. In E. Keltoy, Vol. 6-113-166. UW System Board of Regents, 2004. ISSN 1540-4889. Judici Gamito, Teresa, 2005. The Celts in Portugal. In E. Keltoy, Vol. 6 to 571 605. UW System Board of Regents, 2005. ISSN 1540 to 4889. Luyan Martinez, Eugenio R., 2006. The Languages of the Calarechi. In E. Keltoy, Vol. 6 to 715-748. UW System Board of Regents, 2005. ISSN 1540-4889. Marco Simon, Francisco, 2005. Religion and Religious Practices of the Ancient Celts of the Iberian Peninsula. In E. Keltoy, Vol. 6 to 287 minus 345. UW System Board of Regents, 2005. ISSN 1540 to 4889. Olivares Pedrino, Juan Carlos, 2002. Los Dioses de la Hispania Celtica. Madrid, Universistat de Alicant. ISBN 9788495978. Ruibal, Gonzalez Ruibal, F. 2004. Iron Age Archaeology of the Northwest Iberian Peninsula. In E. Keltoy, Vol. 6 1 72. UW System Board of Regents, 2004. ISSN 1540-4889 Prosper, B. M. 2002 Lingua y religionis preromanas del occidente de la península ibérica. Universidad de Salamanca, 2002. ISBN 84-7800-818-7. Rodríguez Corral, Javier 2009. 
a Galicia Castrexa. Lostrago, 2009. ISBN 978-84-936613-3-5. Romero, Beato, 2009. Zeometrias Morjicas de Galicia. IR Indo, 2009. ISBN 978-84-7680-639-5. Silva, AJM, 2012, Vivre au de la du fleuve de l'oubli. Portrait de la communauté villageoise du Castro du Vieto au moment de l'intégration du nom de la péninsule ibérique dans l'orbis romanum estuaire du Rio Lima, no du Portugal in French, Oxford, United Kingdom, Archaeopteryx. Topic: <laughs> External links. Silva, AJM, 2009, Vivre au Della du Fleuve de l'Oubli. Portrait de la communauté villageoise du Castro du Vieto, au moment de l'intégration du nom de la péninsule ibérique dans l'Orbis Romanum, estuaire du Rio Lima, no du Portugal, PhD thesis presented at Coimbra University in March 2009, 188p. PDF version.